wanted to do a quick walkthrough on how to edit Cinema DNG files in Premiere Pro if you're using the BMP CCOG, the Micro, or the 2.5K. Now, I've had a lot of people message me about this asking if it's possible and if so, how to do it. So first of all, yes, it is possible. There are a couple of ways to get the clips into uh, Premiere. Now, I did talk about this briefly in an earlier video I did about using the BMP CCOG as a vlogging camera. If you missed that, you can check it out. However, one thing I did learn since that video is that depending on your version of Premiere, uh, sometimes you have to bring the clips in in a different way than what I showed you in that video. So there's two ways to do it, both very quick and easy. So no, you don't have to use Resolve to edit uh, raw footage out of these cameras, um, or you don't have to make proxies necessarily to edit them in Premiere. There is a way to edit them natively in their raw format in Premiere Pro. So I'm gonna walk you through that today, but first, if you're just joining us, if you're new to the channel, be sure to hit like, share, and subscribe. And with that, let's get going. Now, obviously the first thing you wanna do is launch Premiere. So once you've got your uh, new project open here, the first way I'm gonna show you how to get these files into uh, Premiere is to just drag and drop them. So what you wanna do is in Finder or if you're on a PC, navigate to where your clips are. Now this could still be on the memory card that you just shot off of, or if you've already got them backed up on your hard drive, simply navigate to wherever your clips, that main folder is. Click into it and you'll see all these other folders. Now each one of these folders is a clip. If you open it up, you'll see a bunch of individual images. These are the DNG raw files. What's gonna happen is that Premiere is gonna take these and assemble them into the clip because right now they actually are one individual frame after another save. That's what raw is essentially. Now the thing to remember is that you do not want to select all the clips. All you need to do is select the very first clip in the folder, click and drag that into your media import bin. Release, it'll import it. As you can see, Premiere has assembled everything for you. It's all here and ready to go. You can click that and drop it into your timeline. Automatically sets the timeline to work with the raw. And as you can see, it plays back just fine, no issues. You can go in and edit it how you would normally edit your clips. So now let's say you wanna bring in another clip or you wanna bring in multiple clips, access it as a list. You can go through, grab that first clip, drop it in, close that folder, open the next folder, grab that first clip, bring it in, it's loaded, close that folder, and you get the gist. Just do this with all your clips and you'll see that they're now all loaded up, ready for you to use, ready for you to edit. You go in and select your in and outs, drop your clip in, it's basically the exact same workflow as if you're using any other format and editing within Premiere. Now, the second way to bring your clips in a little bit more cumbersome, a few more steps, um, but I found that sometimes Premiere does not allow you to simply drag and drop your clips in. You have to go through the standard import procedure for importing clips. The problem with that is that you can't really batch import so easily. Essentially, you're gonna go up to file and import and then just like with the other process, you wanna to navigate to wherever your clips are, you know, either as a dropdown or as icons, whatever is easiest for you to keep track of what you're bringing in. Um, drop down the menu, click on that first clip. Again, only the first clip and select import. And as you can see, it's also brought that in to our editing program. Now, if you want to get into the raw parameters, the metadata, and sort of make some adjustments with the exposure or the color temperature, that's very easy as well. However, it is much more limited than what you're gonna find within Resolve. So double click your clip, go up to the top, effects controls, and then over here, you'll see the source. Now you wanna click onto that source. Now, depending on your version of Premiere, it'll take you out and back to the preview window. I don't know why this is a glitch, uh, in the more recent versions, it used to take you straight into the metadata. So once you see this, you wanna go back again on effects controls, and now you will see that you're under the source profile and you can uh, modify your exposure, adjust your color temperature. Let's say we'll make 3200, or we're gonna take it back to 8000, you're shooting on a cloudy day. You can get in here and really sort of uh, type in and, and set up however you want to, and it's a little bit more effective than just putting it in through the basic color correction that is found within Premiere. Uh, but like I said, when you're in Resolve and you're going in and you're modifying your raw footage, you have a lot more options in adjusting your contrast. Uh, it'll actually tell you what ISO you're setting the camera on. You're not just adjusting it by stops of exposure. If you're in a pinch and you gotta edit this way, 
and you don't have time to take it into Resolve, you don't have access to Resolve, you don't have time to work through it that way, this is definitely an option for you. So from there, edit to your liking, uh, add LUTs. If you wanna add LUTs, do any other adjustments to the color, proceed as you would any other video project. The fact that this is raw shouldn't actually change anything. Export it to your liking. I highly recommend, uh, obviously, as high quality as possible, ProRes HQ, whatnot. Uh, but basically at this point, it's just like any other editing that you might do within Premiere. Now, if you have any interest in learning about uh, doing this process in Resolve, there are a lot of advantages to using Resolve. It's easier to get all your clips in at the same time. It's easier to modify the raw settings. Uh, the color correction options are a lot easier. Uh, however, if you're not editing them in Resolve and you're planning to do this big round trip proxy uh, workflow that works very, very well, uh, but maybe a bit much for whatever project you're working on. But for now, if you want to stick with Premiere, by all means, it is an option for you. So with that, I hope you found this helpful. I hope you found it useful. If this is the way you want to work with these cameras, by all means, I definitely stress using these cameras, shooting them to their full capacity, which means using them in the raw format. And I know that a lot of people are worried that shooting raw limits their ability to edit the footage. I would just encourage you to not let that be a hindrance. And I hope that this uh, helps ease your mind about using these cameras to their full potential. So there you go, a quick little video on that workflow. I hope you found it useful if this is the way you wanna go when editing your raw footage when shooting with these cameras. Feel free to check out my other videos about the OG, the micro, the 2.5K. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And with that, we'll see you next time.